Good afternoon and welcome to Las Vegas. Um, I would like to thank you very much for attending today's conference, uh, Testosterone Replacement Therapy, uh, Optimizing um, Clinical Outcome. Um, this is a subject that's very dear to my heart because when I joined the American Academy of Anti-Aging a few years ago, I was really interested in helping my menopausal patients with bioidentical hormone. But then I got old myself and I got interested in hormone replacement for my male population and for myself. So I read a lot about the topic and I even read, um, wrote a book that's going to come next year. So I hope by the end of this lecture you'll be feeling comfortable um, treating your patient, diagnosing the patient with low testosterone, and able to manage them and um, the pitfalls of the therapy. So in today's lecture, we're going to talk about disease state of low testosterone, the diagnosis of low testosterone, the treatment, and we'll end it up by a summary. Now, according to the uh, American Association of Endocrinologists, there are about 13.8 million men in the United States who have a low testosterone. And this is defined by a low testosterone below uh, 300 nanogram per ml. But I would say that these figures are really uh, are underestimated because as you can see from the graph here that, um, does it show? As you can see with age, testosterone declines. So from age 45 to 54, about 35% of men will have a low testosterone. And then these figures were going to go higher between the age of 55 to 64 to about 40%. And then from 65 to 74, it's going to go to 40. By the time we reach age 85, about 45% of men will have a low testosterone level. And nobody knows what really what low testosterone level is, but most experts agree in labs that it's about 300 nanogram per ml. Now, testosterone, our understanding of testosterone, that it has a huge impact on every single organ of our body, even in women, and it has to do with sex drive. Uh, testosterone prevents Alzheimer disease. It has an effect on the mood, and it, has, uh, it relieves depression. Um, unlike what we hear on the media as regard athletes, all we hear is negative stuff that testosterone can cause steroid rage. It's quite the opposite. Actually, testosterone has a calming effect on the mood. Of course, it helps with libido. It does increase muscle mass. It does stimulate the kidneys to make erythropoietin, so it does uh, more hemoglobin and hematocrit. And it has um, also an immune effect um, because it does stimulate the bone marrow to produce all kinds of cells. Um, it also helps with hair growth, senses of serum protein, it helps with bone health, prevent osteoporosis, uh, osteoporosis it helps with penile growth, spermatogenesis, prostate growth, and function. Now, the production of testosterone is controlled by the hypothalamus, which releases a gonadotropin-releasing hormone, which acts on the pituitary to stimulate the production of FSH and LH. The um, FSH and LH will um, uh, um, stimulate the testicles to make sperm and to make testosterone, which will have a negative feedback on the pituitary back again, like a negative feedback. And that's how athletes really, when they cycle, we can learn sometimes from them, when they use HCG, which has an effect similar to LH. So it does stimulate the production of uh, testosterone from the testicle by having a, an effect similar to the luteinizing hormone. Now, testosterone can go down, of course, as we age, and I showed you the figures about how it goes down precipitously um, as we get older, and most men really feel the symptoms starting from age 30, 40. They will come to your practice, they want, uh, um, you know, Viagra or Cialis, or they may have feeling a little tired. But there are select causes also of low testosterone that I'm going to discuss here. And this can happen congenital with kind filter syndrome, where these men um, are born with very small testicles. It can happen after infection, such as mumps. It can happen after trauma. It's very, very common, of course, in aging men. Again, after age 30, men would experience symptoms of low testosterone. It's very, very common in HIV. About uh, 40 or 50% of HIV-positive patients will have a low testosterone level. 
And secondary causes of low testosterone, anytime we're talking endocrine about primary and secondary, primary would be the source that you're making the hormones. So primary is the testicles here. Secondary is what controlling the hormones. So secondary here is the pituitary that's controlling the hormone. And the pituitary can also be negatively affected by aging, chronic illness, again, HIV, drugs, and alcohol. Now, um, Testosterone in our body, 98% is bound. It's bound to serum hormone binding globulin, about 60%, and 38% is bound to the albumin bound, which is album bound testosterone. Now, the one that is bound to the album is a little loose, so, and that's what we call bioavailable testosterone. And I would like to uh, spend a minute on this slide to explain to you that when you go back to your practices and you screen your patients, you will find some patients, for example, that are in their 20s and 30s, and their testosterone maybe is 400 or 500. And, you know, um, you will ask them questions if they have symptoms of low testosterone, and they tell you, I feel completely fine. And that's because in young people, they have more free testosterone. As we get older, what happens is you can have an old man, an elderly, with a testosterone level of 700, and then he will come to you, but yet he has many, many symptoms of low testosterone and signs and symptoms. And then again, because that he has less free testosterone in his blood, so he's experiencing more symptoms. So it's not just the total testosterone we have to go by, but we have to go by free testosterone. And that explains why you will see people with no more low level of testosterone will feel fine, they may not need supplementation, and people at high level, maybe 700, and they will need testosterone supplementation, even though their level is very, very high. As I just explained, that only 2% of testosterone is free, and that's where we have all the benefits of testosterone by what's free testosterone. And this is what happened with aging. The lightish cell in the testicles die. So we're making, we're making less testosterone. And then in the same time, it's a double whammy. Our serum hormone binding globulin and albumin is increasing. So we're having less free testosterone. So that's why as we age, we really have the symptoms and signs of low testosterone more. So it's like a double effect. The lightish cells are dying, and the serum hormone binding globulin and albumin is increasing in our bloodstream. And as a result, we're going to have less free testosterone and experience symptoms. Now, moving on, I would like to discuss about select cases of low testosterone. Who, will, who, who in your patient population, when you go back to your practices, that you will see will have a low testosterone level? Um, diabetes, obesity, people who use drugs, cocaine, and like I said, HIV, it's very, very high, about 40, 50%. 